This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how to create this vector newsfeed graphic using Inkscape and at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So we'll minimize this and we'll get started here in Inkscape. The first thing I'm going to do is make sure that the view is set to custom and then I'll zoom in at one to one and then I'm going to open up the Align and Distribute menu with this button and we're going to want last selected chosen from this drop down and then we'll open up the edit objects colors gradients and stroke menu with that button up here so the first thing we're going to do is create a rectangle so let's come over to the squares and rectangles tool and click on that and come over to the canvas and click and drag to create a rectangle about this width and this height sort of like the width and height of a, a monitor because that's what we're going to be creating here we're going to be creating a monitor screen so once you have this rectangle created, we can just grab this little node in the top right corner and just click and drag this down to round the corners. I'm going to round it about maybe that much. And the color I'm going to make this is going to be 90% black, 90% gray, which is the first shade over to the right from black. So I'm going to use that shade. And then I'll come back to the Select tool. And I'm going to right click this and go to Duplicate. And then I'm going to create another rectangle, only I'm going to make this one going much bigger going over the top portion of that rectangle and I'm going to make this red and bring the opacity down in half and I'm going to click this button up here to make the corner sharp and then we'll come back to the select tool and I'm just going to pull this arrow down to make sure that uh, it's going down about this far we want this positioned about like this we want to have this black little tab sticking out here maybe a little more maybe about that much is pretty good and once you do that, you could hold shift on the keyboard and click on that black uh, rectangle beneath it and go to path intersection. And what we'll do next is uh, we'll click on this black tab down here because what that did was it created this little section right there. We're going to select this bigger one behind it like that. So let's click on that bigger one and uh, I'm going to make this a light shade of gray, maybe uh, 20%. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to create another rectangle going inside of here to represent the screen. So I'll come back to the squares and rectangles tool. And I'll just click and drag in here to create another rectangle. And again, we're going to want to make the corners of this sharp. And for the color of this one, I'm going to bring the opacity all the way up. And I'm going to come down here to our color picker. And I'm just going to make this a very dull light shade of blue. Maybe that. That looks pretty good. And I'll go back to the select tool. And I'll hold shift in the keyboard and click on this black object beneath it. And we're going to make sure that that is centered on the vertical and horizontal axis. And then we can click off the deselect. So what I'm actually going to do here is, I'm looking at the edges here. The left and right edges seem to be thicker than the top and bottom edges. So I'm just going to resize this a little bit, just to make it look like they all match there. We want to have uh, somewhat equal padding around all of that. And once we've adjusted it to how we like it, we just want to make sure it's centered back up within there. So I'm going to hold shift and click on that black graphic so we have them both selected. And I'm going to center it on the vertical and horizontal axis. And then we can click off of it to deselect everything. So the next thing I'm going to create is the little stand that the monitor sits on. So I'm going to come over to the uh, squares and rectangles tool. And I'm just going to click and drag and create a rectangle going about that size. Maybe about that width and that height going uh, across the bottom of the laptop there. And then I'm going to create an oval. So come over to the circles and ellipses tool and just click and drag to create an oval or an ellipse like that. You're going to want it to be taller in height than this rectangle we just created. And once that's created, I'm going to make this red, bring the opacity down. Come over to the select tool. I'm going to put this over here to the left edge of that rectangle. And I'm going to click on it a second time to get the rotation handles. And I'll hold control on the keyboard and I'll just rotate this over one step. Maybe a second step. No, one step is good. And I'll just put this right here like that. And then I'll right click that and go to duplicate. And I'm going to flip that uh, horizontally. And then hold control on the keyboard and click and drag this over to the right. Right about there. And then I'll hold shift and click on the other oval so we have them both selected and go to path union. And then I'm going to hold shift in the keyboard and click on that little rectangle uh, between those two and just make sure that that is centered on the vertical axis. And then go to path difference. And then I'll send this to the bottom. I'm going to drop this beneath the, the, uh, the computer screen here by clicking the uh, lower selection to the bottom tool. 
And I'm gonna make this the same shade of gray that this is. So I'll go to F, I'll press F7 to get the dropper, or you could just click on the dropper tool over here in the toolbar. I like to use F7. I'll just click and drag on that to make that the same shade. But I'm gonna come over to the fill, the fill uh, tab, and under the HSL tab, I'm gonna come down to the L row and slide that over to the left a little bit, just to make that a little darker. And we'll go back to the select tool. I'll hold shift in the keyboard and click on the gray object right there and just make sure that that is centered up on the vertical axis. And then we can click off of that to deselect everything. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to resize this thing because it seems a little too big for the size of the monitor. So I'm just going to hold control and grab this bottom arrow and scale this in maybe about that much. And I'll hold control and just click and drag it down to about there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create uh, the illusion of a little shadow coming off the bottom of the, uh, the monitor there. And to do that, I'm going to right click on that object and go to duplicate. And I'll turn that black. And I'll bring the opacity down about in half. Then I'll take this gray object right here. I'll right click that and go to duplicate. And I'll bring the, op the opacity of that down just so I can see it, what's beneath it. And then I'll hold control and I'm just going to click and drag this down about that much. And then hold shift in the keyboard and click on that black little shape right there and go to path intersection. And then we'll go to this button that says lower selection one step. We'll click on that to put that beneath the monitor there. And I'll bring the opacity down a little more because we don't want the shadow to be that. We don't want it to be that abrupt. And something like that works pretty good. I think that looks good. So we can click off of that to deselect everything. And one last final step for our little monitor here is that let's come over to the, um, the squares and rectangles tool. And I'm going to put just a little base at the bottom of this thing here. So I'm just going to create a little rectangle down here so that there's a base on it. And I'm going to press plus on the keyboard a few times just to zoom in. And you can roll up and down on the mouse wheel to move the page, or you can just press down on the mouse wheel and move the mouse to move the page around. And when I'm zoomed in here, I just want to make sure that I have this little node right here brought all the way down so that the, the corners of this rectangle are rounded. Then we can bring the opacity all the way up and press F7 on the keyboard to get the dropper again. And we're going to make this the same shade of gray that this is up here. So we can just click on that and make that the same shade of gray. Come back to the select tool, hold shift in the keyboard and click on the stand right there so we have them both selected. And we're just going to make sure it's centered by clicking the button that says center on the vertical axis. There we have that. I'll press one on the keyboard to zoom back out. Click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create uh, sort of like a little page here to make it look like it's coming out of the screen, our little social media newsfeed page. So let's come back to the squares and rectangles tool. And I'm just going to click and drag and create a rectangle like that. And again, we're going to want to make the corner sharp. And I'm going to make this um, not quite white, but one shade over to the left. 2.5% gray, maybe 5% maybe gray. That's pretty good. And I'll go back to the select tool, and I'm just going to make this thing a little wider. We don't want to leave too much space between the page and the screen there. So maybe about that width is pretty good. And then I'm going to hold shift and click on the dull blue shape right there. And I'll make sure that that is centered on the vertical axis. And then I'm going to align the bottom edges with that button right there. And that's pretty much set. So we can click off of that now to deselect everything. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to create um, just like a makeshift design of a social news feed in here. So I'll come back to the squares and rectangles tool. And I'll hold control and shift in the keyboard and click and drag on the canvas to create a perfectly a perfect square. You know what? Let me undo that. I'm going to create it off off of the side here so we could actually see it. A perfect square like that. And I'll take the select tool and I'm just going to um, let me make this a different shade. I'm going to make this uh, blue like that. And I'll put this right up here in the corner of the page right there. I'm going to take this S row and make that a little more dull. This is going to be so, more of like a, a simple flat style. I'll go with something like that. And then we'll come over to the circles and ellipses tool and I'll hold control and shift in the keyboard and just click and drag to create a little circle like that. And I'll take the L column and slide that to the right a little bit just to make that a little lighter. I'll come back to the select tool, hold shift in the keyboard and click on that little square right there. And we're just going to center that up on the vertical and horizontal axis. And then we can click off of it to deselect everything. So there's our little makeshift uh, profile picture. And I'm going to click on this uh, blue square, and I'll right click that and go to duplicate. Then I'll hold control on the keyboard and just click and drag this down beneath it. 
and take this bottom arrow and just bring that up like that so it kind of looks like a little line of text or something. And I'll right click that and go to duplicate, hold control and click and drag that down about that much. Uh, that's pretty good. And then I'll take this uh, blue square right here. I'm going to duplicate that again. We'll right click that and go to duplicate. And then hold control and click and drag this over to the right about that far. And then we can let go of everything and take this arrow to the right and bring this over towards the edge of the page, maybe about that much. And I'm going to make this a slightly darker shade of gray than the pages. So I'll kind of come back down here to the color picker. And I'll go with that shade right there. That's pretty good. And I'll take this, this bottom arrow and bring this down about that much. And what I'll do now is I'll take this, I'll take this uh, circle and then hold shift and then click on the square so we have them both selected. And I'll right click that and go to duplicate and put this up here in this top left corner. And I'll hold control on the keyboard and just click and drag that down about that much. And I'm just going to position this in the top left corner over here. And then I'll hold shift and click on the circle to deselect it so we just have that box selected now. And I'm going to make that a slightly darker shade of gray than this interior gray shape is. And I'll click on this circle and I'll press F7 to get the keyboard and I'll just make it this same shade of gray that that is, but maybe a little lighter by sliding the L column to the right a little bit. That's pretty good. We'll go back to the select tool. Uh, let's take this little uh, blue line right here. We'll right click that, go to duplicate, put this right here. Bring this, uh, we'll take this arrow and bring that over to the right about that much and then I'll hold shift in the keyboard and click on that uh, that box or the circle either one we're just gonna make sure it's aligned on the horizontal axis so that it's centered up between that and then we can click off of that to deselect and you know what I'm actually just gonna take these two objects right here I'm just gonna bring that in a little closer maybe like that that's good and I'm gonna take this blue line and make that the same shade of dark gray that the box is. So let me zoom in so we could so this makes things a little easier. I'm just going to press plus on the keyboard a few times to zoom in. And I'll press F7 on the keyboard to get the dropper and we'll make this the same shade that that is. And that looks pretty good. We'll go back to the select tool and I'm going to create another rectangle going in here. I'll create a rectangle like that. About that size. I'll go back to the select tool and I want to make sure that this rectangle is the same width as this box and this line. So I'm going to click on this box, I mean I'm going to click on this line and then hold shift and click on that box. And up here where it says W, whatever the width is there, just click and drag over that number and hit control C to copy that to your clipboard. And then we'll click on this box that we just created and I'm going to highlight everything in there. Just press control V to paste it in there and then hit enter and it'll now be the same width as this information up top. So what I'll do now is I'll hold shift and click on this box just to make sure that the edges are aligned. I'll click on um, align left edges and that's pretty good. We can click off of that to deselect and I'll take this, I'll right click that and go to duplicate, hold control, bring this down to about here and let me roll down the mouse wheel so I can see. I'm going to take this bottom arrow and just pull that up about that much. And we'll leave that as it is. I'm going to press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to see how this is looking. All right, it's coming along pretty well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put like a little uh, play button in here to make it look like this is some kind of video. So uh, I'll click on this, this little blue circle right here. Right click that and go to duplicate. Hold shift in the keyboard and click on the rectangle and center it on the vertical and horizontal axis. And then click off of it to deselect everything and I'll just take um, this circle right here and I'm gonna come down to the color picker and I'm gonna make this a different shade of blue maybe uh, I'll go with that shade right there maybe a little lighter Yeah, that's pretty good and I'm gonna put a little play button inside of here this is supposed to be a play button I'm gonna put a little triangle in there to represent the play button and to do that I'm going to use the stars and polygons tool to create that triangle and I'm going to choose regular polygon corners 3 rounded 0.15 and randomize zero. And once we have that, I'm going to hold control and shift and click and drag on the canvas to create this little triangle, this little rounded triangle. And I'm gonna have it positioned like that. And I'll take the L column and slide that to the right a little bit to make that a little lighter. Almost white, that's pretty good. And I'll go back to the select tool. I'll hold uh, shift in the keyboard and click on the circle and center it on the vertical and horizontal axis. 
and then we can click off of it to deselect. So we're going to have to make this a little smaller now. So I'm going to click on that and hold Control and Shift and scale that in. That's a pretty good size. And again, we're going to have to hold Shift and click on the circle to make sure it's centered again. Center on the vertical and horizontal axis. And you know what? Even though it's centered, I still don't like how that looks. So I'm just going to hold Control and bring that to the right a little bit. So it gives it the illusion that it's centered. Even though it's me it, it was mathematically centered here, but it doesn't look like it's centered because there's some open gaps of space here. So I'll just hold Control and move that to the right a little bit. And that's pretty good. Press 1 on the keyboard to zoom back out. Maybe I won't make that as light. I'll darken that up a little bit. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to click and drag over all of this gray that we just created right here. And I'll right click that and go to duplicate and hold control and just click and drag this down to about here. Maybe about that far, that's pretty good. And then we can click off of it to deselect. Let me click on that, that play button, press delete, click on that, press delete, click on that, press delete. And I'll take this line, I'm just going to hold control and move that up to about here. And this object right now is now descending into the laptop, into the, uh, the monitor, which we don't want. So let's click on this white page right here. Right click that and go to duplicate. Hold shift and then click on that rectangle and go to path, intersection. And now it's bound within the confines of the monitor screen. So I'll take this line right here, I'll right click that and go to duplicate. Hold control and click and drag it down to the about there. And I'll create one more copy of that, right click. Duplicate, hold control, move that down to about there. And then we could press 1 on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. Click and drag over the whole thing to group it together. Uh, select everything and then group it together with this button up here. And that's pretty much it. We now have our uh, little uh, flat style social news feed graphic. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.